I've got a big package right here to open up. Check out my merch shirt. Rifa. She's gonna blow. I thought it was appropriate anyway. So if you want this shirt, it's still my merch store. Go and check it out. There'll be links on YouTube down below, somewhere around here. It's definitely in the description anyway. Go to Teespring. Package. Let's get into it. It's big. It's fairly heavy. What is it? Looks like it's probably well packaged, which is good. Excuse the boarding head. Bus merch. Uh oh, this is going to get messy. It's full of peanuts. Inside here somewhere is something interesting. Right. Anything else in this box stuffed inside here? Well packaged. Got my Death Palm seal of approval. Alright, let's get this thing out of here. Very well packaged. Very good job. If you ever send any test gear anywhere, package it like this. It's almost like Christmas, isn't it? Open, opening packages up. Presents and... Oh, I think it's people like my mailbag videos because it's like opening presents. The reason I use this instead of a knife is because if this hits the bodywork of the instrument, it isn't going to cause any damage. It won't scratch it. Reacted in a clean film. Done a very nice job packaging this. I'm actually impressed. Just taking it seriously. Wish more people did. Anyone yeah, guess what it is yet? Ready? It's this thing. And that's as close as this lens gets because I put the wide angle lens on to get a bit of shot. It's a WaveTech Synthesized Function Generator Model 288. Does it work? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We'll chuck on the bench and have a play. I'm going to put the remote. I've lost the remote for the camera. Here it is. There you go. Here's a close look at the front. So, frequency, amplitude, symmetry, offset. A little bit of chunk at the button there. Phase lock, display, calibrate, reset, main power switch. On off and selecting over here for the waveforms. Power lock, pram reset, cursor control, modulation, start, stop, and time. Sweep, I guess that means push back for sweep. CW, AM, or FM, VCF, there's a selection button. Local remote option and IEEE. Buttons feel like the five really have been used. And there's a select over here as well for the output. 50 ohms, 75, 135, 600 and balanced. So, probably an earthing post there. Well, BNC's over the place along this thing. Well and truly stuck <laughs> on these covers. These covers really don't release too well. <laughs> They're all really tight. And also got these banana type cacks down here as well. Positive and negative, as you can see. Yeah. And also your keyboard over here and a whizzy dial thing. Let's flip it around to the back and have a look at the back. And I'll try and get these off. So as you can see it's set for 120 volts and it can do 100, 120, 220, 240 according to these. And there's the fuse ratings, so pretty small fuses. Made in USA. And or oh, model 1288, not 288. Interesting, on the front it's a 288. Curious. And over here it says termination of warranty in 1992. So this is, you know, 30 years old basically. And it looks like we do have a IEEE port over there, which had a little cover on. That's nice. Um, so I need to pull this card out here and change the voltage settings. Pop the fuse out for start because that needs to be changed as well. And we'll get that card out of there. See if my tweezers can do it. I'll lose the fuse. Hmm. Sometimes they're a bit hard to get out. No, no, this one's coming. There we go. It's coming out. So all we've got to do is turn this card around to change the voltage you want. Now, where my country is, it's 240 volt. So all we've got to do is spin it around like that and put it back in.
and change this fuse to the correct one, which is supposed to be a 375 milliamp instead of a 750. Well, it's supposed to be 750. What's in here? It says three quarter amp, so yep, 750. So let's find a better fuse. I have to dig through my stash, but this is 500 milliamp fuse, so probably close enough. Probably not ideal, but close enough. So we'll shove this one in. Slightly overrated, but uh, we'll see how we go. So let's get this thing plugged in and see what happens. Right, I've got the power plugged in. Let's turn it on. So I've set to 230 volts, so that's slightly low side. And we'll see if we can get anything out of it. Ready for magic smoke? Oh, at least the screen works. The display's working. So it's inter interesting, it's actually called a 1288, but on the front it says 288. Curious. Is that as far as it goes? Just says the model number. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Frequency 1 kilohertz. Right. Amplitude 5 volt peak to peak. Right, we'll wind up like that. What's it go up to? 15 volt peak to peak. Cool. If I go 1. Hmm. <laughs> There's no like option for volt anyway. One enter. There we go. One. That will do really volts as well. Hundreds of milli volts. Cursor. There we go. Yeah, changing single milli volt steps. Nice. Okay, so frequency wise, let's have a look at that. What can we get out of this? Um, do zero. What's this last thing to do? One kilohertz? No, can't be right, surely. Right. This could take a little while. Millihertz, here we go. With the cursor over. So yeah, two millihertz is the last it will do. What's the highest frequency it can do? It's probably some information like specs or something for this thing somewhere, but I like to actually play around with it and see what we get. So one megahertz so far. Let's go five, enter. Oh, 0.5, no, that's not a lot. <laughs> 100. So, 1 kilohertz. 100 kilohertz, okay, let's do it this way. Stick a whole bunch of zeros in there. What do we get? 100 kilohertz. Yeah, I wanted more than that. 113 kilohertz. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not quite sure I like this whole method of changing the. Frequencies anyway, 18 megahertz, 20 megahertz. There we go, did it that way. 20 megahertz display intensity. I suppose you wind it down a bit, it will last a bit longer. Got 31. So I think actually 16 is probably not too bad, but it was for in there with my lab lighting and stuff anyway. Okay, so it's what this is unlock here. because I don't have anything going in externally. Different waveforms. DC offset, okay. Uh, symmetry, 50%, yeah, okay. Well, I need to hook this up with something and actually see what comes out of it. Over here. If I can get then these caps off. They're pretty well shrunk on there. All right, so these caps are pretty tight, so what I'm gonna do is just warm up a little bit, like that, and I'll then should be able to pop them off. Here we go. Soften them up a little bit. And then I'll replace these with some different ones because I don't like them. So I'm just pushing over here, select button for the 50 ohms. It's actually switching to 75 ohms as well, so it's doing switching between those two. Most undo the frequency because I'm at 20 megahertz. Maybe I'll try a different frequency. 0 0.001. Megahertz. Does that allow anything different? There we go. Now we do 600 ohms. So obviously you can only change the output types depending on the frequencies. 
It will actually do all of them. Don't know why it doesn't go boom, 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 boom. Anyway, it does. It goes around in a kind of weird way. 50, 75, 600 balanced from unbalanced. And then 135 unbalanced. Curious, anyway. So that's the unbalanced and that's the balanced output. So we're going to be using the unbalanced output because we're going to use a bit of BNC cable. Hook up to a scope and see what comes out of it. So just to make a change, I thought I'd fight the key site. I haven't fired that enough for a little while. And uh, there's a waveform. It is actually doing something. Triangle wave, square wave, DC with no. I might have DC coupling to another actually. Um, but you can see on this a little bit jittery, which I'm finding a little bit curious. It means it's likely got a power supply problem. It could be some noise on one of the power supplies, which is causing it to trigger a bit weirdly. So it probably does have something to fix, but it does output a signal. Now I'm set at 1 volt peak to peak with a 50 ohm output. Let's see what the scope is set up for. No bandwidth limit. DC coupling. Well, it's made that AC, surely. No, that's, no, that's still on DC. What else we got here? 101. Well, I'm using a, a BNC cable, so I should be doing 10 to 1, really. Um, let's go. 1 to 1. And then, so measurements should be a bit more accurate. Should be. Now, measurements. ACIMS is what I'm measuring. So we've got DCIMS down here, ACIMS, and peak to peak. I'm getting two volts, peak to peak. But it's measuring one megahertz. So the frequency coming out is correct because that's what I'm injecting into it. So not too bad, but the peak to peak is interesting because it should be doing one volt peak to peak unless I change something by accident. It says one volt peak to peak. Well, it's getting double. If I do 75 ohms, okay, okay. So it's not actually, I mean, this level's not changing, but I don't actually have a load on here. This is my mega ohm input, there's no actual 50 ohm load, so that'd be twice, twice as much as it should be. But changing the output resistance on here. To 75 ohms hasn't changed it. 600 ohms. Oh, it's changed a little bit actually. It's changed it slightly. Let's just go around. Oops, went past it again. 50 ohms is there. So it's 2.15, 2.17. 75 ohms is the same. 600 ohms has dropped down to 190 or so. So it's changing up a very slightly depending on the resistance. Okay, well, I think I need to get a actual proper load in this thing to get this level correct. Let's do that. Okay, so now stuck a 50 ohm load across the output of the generator, and you can see now it's now doing 1.06 volts. So that's more like it, that's actually in line with what it should be doing. So let's actually increase this very slightly, shall we? Let's go 2 volts, and we'll wind the input scaling down a bit. So 2.5 on there, mind you, because it's probably a bit low. That's 6 volt peak to peak, that is 11 volts peak to peak. It's really slightly high there. That's 15 volts peak to peak. It's 15.7 on the scope. Um, I won't go too much because there's only a little 50 ohm load. It's not a very heavy load. But that seems to be working. Not too much. But that jittering around is probably a power supply problem. That's what I'm guessing anyway. So we've got triangle wave there. Also jittering around. But it is actually kind of working. Screw wave's looking a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's, oh, that transition's pretty bad. Anyway, but it's probably because my I'm mean, using this cable here, and it's like probably picking up a bit of noise and ringing because I've got the load at this end, not that end, and that sort of stuff. So don't worry about it too much. It's not great probing. So it also has modulation sweep on here as well. So AM modulation. That's sweeping. Can we see this on here? Anyway, so that is sweeping, and that is sweeping from 1 kilohertz to 2 kilohertz modulation. And that's carry wave, so it's a straight modulation. That's FM instead, which is all going to be disappearing at noise anyway. So interesting, I can't do AM modulation at this frequency. So if I want the frequency up a bit, then let me do 2 megahertz on FM. Carrier wave 
it will allow me, let me wind it up. So I'm not quite sure what frequency it's looking at there. I might have to look at this a bit more. It seems to basically be working. So it does need some work, I think. So check out the video for this in the future. It'll be me pulling something apart and recapping it while I'm expecting. But we'll give you a little preview. Found it interesting, give us a thumbs up. Leave the these things. And um, subscribe if you're not really subscribing, that sort of stuff. And uh, watch out for this video, okay, in the future. Catch you later. Bye. Thank you.